Okay, we've waited almost forever and we now have a new live action Star Trek. We'll talk about it in a second. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd. And uh, before we get started on talking about the um, Kobayashi Maru episode one of season four of Star Trek Discovery, uh, I want to make a word uh, to our international viewers. First of all, I'm not going to give any major spoilers on uh, any of these reviews because uh, it looks like uh, it will be a couple of months at least before you'll be able to see the actual episodes. Uh, this is something that uh, is, is very unfortunate. Uh, just days before the premiere episode of season four of Star Trek Discovery, uh, it was... Um, taken off of Netflix uh, around the world where it would have been distributed outside of the United States and uh, moved to Paramount Plus, which will not be available in many areas uh, until sometime in what they say is early uh, uh, 2022. So uh, we, are, uh, we are hoping that it comes to you uh, sooner than later, and uh, we will try and uh, keep from spoiling the episodes at all while still giving a straightforward review. For those of you in the United States that have seen the show, uh, we hope that uh, you will bear with us on this and uh, continue to follow our channel. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the structure of the new episodes. And uh, we see a slight redesign to Discovery. It was talked about uh, during the uh, previous season that the uh, Federation was redesigning the ship somewhat in order to be brought up to um, an extra 900 years of technology, but um, we have not seen as clearly in the uh, previous season uh, just how many changes to the ship were made uh, on the outside um, virtual model. It's not a physical model. It's all done in CG, and they do seem to have improved their CG. Uh, they also, and this is behind the scenes kind of stuff, have uh, developed what is called an AR wall. It is a um, basically a bunch of video screens that uh, are in a half circle in which uh, the actors are ab able for the first time to actually see the environment that they're in. In many science fiction shows and in uh, most scenes of them, uh, there are not practical sets as much as there are green screens that you have to kind of imagine what's going to be there once it's tricked in. In this case, uh, the special effects were done ahead of time and the actors could actually see the environment that they were in. And so it has some effect on their ability to act in these situations and uh, also allows them to do many more special effects uh, without having to do the um, more complicated um, uh, matting and uh, and uh, assembling that would have to be done in a situation like that. Uh, at any rate, uh, the episode is called Kobibashi Maru, which is a reference to the um, first use in uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, where the, it is a training uh, program at Starfleet Academy in which uh, a captain, a, a prospective captain, is uh, given a no-win scenario. Uh, the uh, exercise is rigged in such a way that no matter what decision the captain makes, you lose. And the possibility of a no-win scenario is something that might uh, happen to any captain and they need to be ready in order to make this. In fact, even in the original series, they were talking about this um, uh, special test where there needed to be a split second decision and uh, not everybody could do it well enough to deserve command status. And uh, it wasn't given a name until uh, the Wrath of Khan. Anyway, it's used here because uh, of the overarching plot that's going to be this year, which is an anomaly in space that uh, that attacks. This is something that's been talked about in the previews, uh, some kind of um, 
natural phenomenon or, or perhaps unnatural phenomenon that uh, is going through space and creating havoc. And uh, we have seen this and uh, they spent a lot of money uh, destroying a lot of things in order to do this. Uh, Discovery, of course, uh, with its spore drive is uh, always in the front lines of these things and uh, therefore uh, they are uh, the ones to respond. Uh, we see uh, Captain Burnham now taking her place in the center seat and uh, the episode starts out joyful. We, we see Burnham for the first time uh, really feeling like she's in the place that she belongs and enjoying it with a book at her side and um, uh, we still see uh, uh, grudge and uh, uh, other situations like that. We see early on um, uh, Blue Delberio, who uh, is now uh, an ensign and uh, works alongside of Tilly. And um, we're not quite sure if Tilly is uh, still the first officer. Uh, it hasn't been mentioned, but she certainly is a prominent bridge officer. Uh, they show uh, new uh, special effects for the um, spore jump and uh, add a few audio effects to it as well, which uh, actually uh, kind of add to the excitement of, uh, of the jump. They introduce the, uh, the new president of the Federation. Her name is Laura Rillick, and uh, she is a, a mix of Cardassian Bajoran and human, and uh, it indicates that 900 years into the future, uh, uh, Cardassia and Bajor have uh, reached uh, a somewhat of a, uh, a truce in that uh, you can see uh, some intermarriage between the two species, and uh, also part human as uh, Federation people are also uh, part of that uh, society by then. Um, so uh, an interesting uh, nemesis for Burnham in the same way perhaps that um, uh, Michelle Yeoh's character was uh, and the um, tension between them is palpable, uh, but uh, in grand Star Trek fashion, you don't find one of them being really the bad guy. Uh, they, they have differences of opinions, but uh, they both know what their job is. They know what they're doing and how they're doing it. And uh, one could side with either one of them on uh, any of their uh, disagreements. So it's, uh, it's rather uh, an interesting uh, situation that they're setting up there. We uh, visit Kaminar and we find that Saru is an elder, uh, a, uh, a very prized elder from 900 years back. And his experience with uh, Kaminar back in the day is a value to the people there. And so uh, his word has a lot of weight with them. As you recall, he went back to Kaminar uh, along with the, uh, the other um, Kelpian who was the cause of the burn. And there was a, a, a situation that was concerned that the um, uh, Kelpians would not accept him. And that's why Saru uh, left Discovery and went with them. So um, uh, there is uh, some um, reference to that as well. Um, Let's see, a couple of Easter eggs. They uh, introduced a new space dock. This was also uh, teased in some of the promos, uh, named after um, uh, Jeffrey Archer. So uh, that is uh, the Archer space dock in which uh, they're going to build uh, new ships with even newer technology as the Federation uh, rebuilds itself. Um, there was a, an interesting... Um, coming of age ceremony on uh, uh, Quajon, which was Book's home planet, uh, in which a, a younger relative of him of his was uh, going through a, um, uh, a coming of age ceremony, in which uh, they took uh, tree sap from a ancient tree that that uh, engulfed the planet and uh, also a drop of blood of the family member and uh, worn in an amulet around, uh, around the neck to uh, show uh, this um, 
change in status. It's it's almost like uh, some religions uh, where scapulars, it's something that, that you keep with you to uh, remind you of, uh, of what's important. Um, so uh, uh, all of these things uh, go together. There's a new word. I like this, uh, squiddled. I think I want to start using that. It apparently means the same thing as, uh, to keep it clean, foobar. Uh, if you know what foobar means, that's what squiddled means. And uh, I kind of like that, that uh, uh, bit of linguistics there. Lots of action uh, this episode, and we'll expect for this season, and uh, we look forward to it uh, as uh, live action has come back, and uh, it's going to be uh, quite a ride uh, through uh, whatever it is that they're fighting and uh, the uh, interpersonal situations that they find themselves in. So uh, I'd like to know what your reaction is if you have seen the show. Uh, and uh, also I'd like to hear from some of our international audience as well. Uh, if you uh, uh, have some idea of uh, what happened, we don't really have any information yet on uh, why uh, Paramount pulled the um, uh, premier episode and I guess the rest of the series from Netflix internationally, or if it was something that Netflix did in some kind of disagreement with Paramount. We have no idea, but uh, we um, uh, would like to hear from you and uh, let, let you uh, uh, air whatever you, uh, you're thinking about this uh, in our U.S. audience. Uh, what do you think of the show? Uh, put it all down in the comments and uh, we will read it with interest and uh, respond as we can. So uh, we have another video this week coming as uh, Doctor Who goes into another episode in a couple of days. So um, click the, um, the bell. And uh, if you've uh, not subscribed, please subscribe so you know when the next video comes your way. It doesn't cost a cent and uh, it will help us uh, uh, build our channel here. So um, thank you for watching. And until we talk to you in a couple of days, don't go far.